Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, we've got a little bit of an odd video today, and this is something that in all the years that I've been keeping spiders, I have never actually had this problem. Um, and it's caught me out, and it's really uncanny how this has actually happened um, today. This is Sunday. You are seeing this video on Monday morning. So we are doing it the day before. Now, you might well have seen on Facebook, there's been a couple of accounts of um, people reporting spiders that they bought at the last show that um, they thought had nematodes. And uh, this is a very difficult thing to actually try and work out whether they have got nematodes or not. Nematodes, I believe, are more of an internal parasite rather than an external parasite. Now, it came out on uh, one of the posts that it was said that they were actually forid flies. Now, that is something that I thought was a little bit, a little bit unusual because I have never ever witnessed um, an attack of forid flies in that manner. Not on an adult spider, you know, where it's actually been infested with them. And that seems really, really odd to me. Very, very strange. Anyway, today. I was working my way through my collection, and as you know, we have got boxes everywhere. There's stuff all over the place, and we are slowly trying to work our way down through it. And one of these boxes contained our adult female Singapore Blue. Now, this is a spider that you regulars would have seen many, many times. We've bred her a good few times. She's an amazing spider, very, very healthy, fit spider. And... I noticed she was not looking well. And basically, what's happened is she was put into this tub here and um, with, with a deep substrate up to like here. Now, the problem was that substrate became too moist over time because there's no way of it for leaking out. There's not enough ventilation in this particular tub. You've got these little holes here. They are so small. Cool. They're just about big enough for a forehead fly to get in, but they're not big enough for ventilation. So um, you would imagine there was there was very very little inf um, um, airflow of any ventilation within this box. Now this was um, a bad thing. So what's happened is when we've come back into this room. This room is warm, and basically what's happened is this box has sweated. So it's absolutely just been sweating with the spider in it. Now, one of the things, one of the places that we get a lot of these forehead flies, you do get them occasionally in the soil, but we've never suffered with them like that. Not in a bad way. We, we don't get big numbers of them, and they're normally easy to deal with. Once they come through, you literally dry them out, they die off job done they're gone where we do get them from is in our cricket tubs and they are an absolute curse it don't matter where you get your crickets from they seem to come with these damn flies and this is one of the reasons we use very little in the way of crickets here we tend to use roaches and stuff like that we just do not like crickets but we did end up getting a few boxes of crickets just for ease so that we could whip through and do some feedings. We've still got lots and lots of stuff that needs rehousing from its um, temporary homes into its permanent homes. And we are rejigging around. We're using more tubs like this than we have done before. So it's a bit of a learning curve with how they're gonna behave in this room. And this is one of the problems we've had. So we've ended up with an infestation in this particular tub. Once they're in there, they're not going anywhere and they are literally all over the place. So we found our female, opened her up to feed her and that, saw some flies coming out, and was like, what the hell's going on? Checked her, she is not looking well. Not looking well at all. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna, we're gonna have to handle this spider, we're gonna have to hold her, grab her up, and then we're gonna try and clean her off. Now, we've seen um, many of the posts that, that are on, the, um, on Facebook at the moment, regarding these forehead flies and the infestation they cause on your spider. Now, one of the things that's being put out there is that you should euthanize your spider. 
I don't really think that is necessarily the way to go. So what we're going to do today is we are going to try and clean this spider up. Get rid of any maggot that might be on her and what have you. Bearing in mind, maggots are an external parasite. So they're not an internal parasite. So to my way of thinking, I think we can clean her up and basically get her back back to health. I think we might have caught her just in time. She has got a lot of, lot of stuff on her, but I think we can clean her up. I don't see the need to actually euthanize her. If this had been a case of nematodes, then yes, it, the, the safest bet would just be to euthanize her, freeze her, dispose of the body, you know? But this being an external problem, I believe we can just clean her up and hopefully deal with it. We'll keep her in a dry environment. Although this is a humidity loving spider, she is going to end up going in the dry. And this in turn will help clean up some of what's going on with her as well. So first things first, what we're going to do, we're going to add some extra ventilation to this box. So we are literally just going to drill out the holes that we had that are already there. And we're going to get a little bit more, a little bit more air going on. Now you'd have remembered me saying about airflow in one of our previous videos and that still stands true now we're not going to get masses of airflow in this box but by having bigger holes what will happen is it will allow the box to breathe in terms of humidity now because we're going to keep her dry it shouldn't make too much difference but it will help. So I'm just going to whop these through. Put some through the top as well. We're not looking at it being pretty. We just want it to be serviceable. should do for that. So I'm just going to clean these off. Now everything that we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to try and clean this spider up. It may work, it may not. I'll be honest with you, I've never had to deal with this in any of my spiders before. Um, and I put that down to the fact that we we have good management over our humidity. You know, we understand how humidity works. And it's, you know, and we stay on top of it. Now, unfortunately, with this one, we've missed the boat. So what we're going to do now is we are literally just going to tidy this up. Get rid of these bits. Right. Now, you guys will know I don't like cocoa fiber, but in this instance, it's actually going to be useful. So we're going to put some cocoa fiber in the bottom here. going to keep a very very basic enclosure here and we're going to put that in there like that that is it I'm going to get a water bowl just don't forget although we want to keep our spider dry she will still require some water I'm put that down there like so um, 
นะครับ Now this is um, this is a good point actually. We're making this this enclosure here. This is just going to be a nice simple thing that we can house her in and we can monitor her. Now one of the things that I see an awful lot on Facebook is these um, what do they call them? Um, You're not going to say ITV. Yes. <laughs> yes. We see a lot of what people call. An ICU enclosure, which I think is probably one of the worst things you could ever do to your spider. You know, I know people have got good intentions and they, you know, they're doing their best. They want to try it, but put it into a practical sense. You have taken your 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 sickly spider, which you believe to be sick. Quite often, they're not always sick. You know, it's just how they're behaving, and you take it out and you put it in a Completely clear environment with a bit of soggy wet tissue paper on the bottom, and stick it back on the shelf. It's like if you suffered from agoraphobia, that is how that spider is feeling right now, absolutely out of its comfort zone. And one thing that kills more spiders than anything else is stress. So all you are doing is stressing your spider out. Yeah. What we're going to do here, we've left a piece of cork in here. She can get under here, she can get underneath it. And then what we're going to do is we are going to put this in a dark corner of the room so that there is no light all around here. It's going to be nice and dark. And that is what we want. We want her to just chill out and recuperate. Right, now the fun part. We are now going to try and catch this spider. We've got her in here. Now... As you now, there's actually a couple of forage flies in the box now. So they've actually come off of her already. There you go. And you can smell her. She doesn't smell too healthy. So now mm. the, the hard part is now we've got a particularly fast spider and with a very strong, potent venom. And we're going to need to literally hold her down. And this isn't going to be the easiest thing in the world. And we've got to hope that we don't end up in trouble. So what we're going to do, we're going to get, get her onto the table. And we've not had an absolutely brilliant look at her at the moment. So this is a first real, real look at her. Now. When we see here, you can see these tiny, tiny white markings here. This is frass from the flies. So we're going to try and clean that up. It's all over. It's all over her feet. It's everywhere. But as you can see, it literally just brushes off. So we're going to keep an eye. We don't want her going anywhere. But what we do need is we are going to need to get underneath and see what's going on. Like I say, if we add smell of vision now, she does not smell very good. So this might all be in vain, but we've got to give it a go. Right. What we're going to do, we're going to get to move back around here. Now, this is as Singapore's blues go, she is a fairly steady spider anyway. She's very, very calm. As you see, we're not getting any fret displays, but then we're maintaining our contact. And she's not well, so what we're going to do now is we, we're going to try and get a lay. Yeah, she's still got some life in her. That's good. Yeah. Still no thing. So what we need to do we're just going to bring her back over. We turn around because I'm right handed, you see. And you see this here? Mm -hmm. That will be from the underside. That's her mouth parts. 
What you want to do is get her to face the other way, so I'm getting a hold of her. Don't want to face that way, do you? That's it. She's slowly working it out that she might be in trouble. You're facing the wrong way for me. What are you doing? Right. We'll just take our time. What we're, gonna, what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to pinch grab her, which isn't always the nicest thing to do. We need to get her in the right hand. Come this way. These have got, they can literally flick around on their backs. And as you can see, she's still got quite a lot of go in her. I don't want to squash her on the table. So you can see that. I'm not quick enough to... That's alright. Just go back under the table again. Stand still. Alright. I was hoping she was going to sit gently. There you go, you see there? Now we get to see a little bit of what's going on underneath her. Right, now we got hold of her. You can see what's going on. It just pays to take your time. And you can see here, this is our, this is our mouth parts down in here. What you to do is try and now you see here, this is all maggots. See them? That's what we can smell. This is what we need to try and clean up. And as you saw there, even though we ended up chasing her around a little bit, she didn't get particularly flustered. So what happens is, is the fly comes in and it lays its eggs in here. And these are these are maggots here.
need to clean them all out. I'm actually losing my grip here. Okay. She has got one hell of a grip on me. God, look at that. So this is the worst part in here. And we've actually managed to get rid of most of that. Get the water on it. Be patient, girl. Be patient. I'm going to get you cleaned up. Literally just brushing them off now. As you can see there now, she is much, much cleaner. I'm just going to get rid of all this old stuff. Look at that, she's all right. You can literally see now this this was all really bad round here. But we now got it clear. Um looks like all right, we probably could do with a cotton Yeah. This. Just looking at kind of your little face for a minute, so <laughs> boobies. Oh, lovely. Hold on just a second. I'm just going to get a cotton bud and then we can clean her up. Keep it dry. Good job. You know, it's not getting any sort of fang action as such there. Maybe she's realising that we are actually trying to help. Or oh, she's in shock, yeah. And as you can see, she is actually quite robust. And this is something that we might well have to do again in a day or two. What we're doing now is we are just literally checking to have a look, see if we can see anything moving. Any little maggots, there's one, see? In there. Get rid of that little devil. Another one there. Notice that the fangs are very clean. I've not got any issues with them. 
these bits that we're seeing on the legs here, these are dry bits. So they're not really of any concern. On the look of it. Yeah, they just look like dry stuff. There's one. You can actually see that they're they die real easy. All right. I think that is about her. What we'll do now is we will just hold her down here and we're going to try and clean up some of this stuff here. And as we've seen there, this is actually just dry. So I don't think this is going to cause us any problems. See, that just comes off. I think we can safely leave her be now. Right, we're going to let her go on the table because this is going to be the easiest way to release her. So we hold her down like this on the carapace and then we just lift up nice and quickly and we can allow her to do her thing. She might just take off, so watch yourself. It doesn't look like she's got anything else. Be very careful she doesn't spring into life. Yeah, that definitely is just like dried frass. It's the whoop. It's the residue from the maggots. Right then, so what we're going to do now, we are going to pop her back in her box because she has been very, very well behaved. So we're just going to get her to go in here. Now you might be thinking, you know, why, why didn't we just pick her up and put her straight in the box? And the reason being, is it's much easier to get her in like this than it is to try and put her in by hand. Right. Make a decent picture of her there. Yeah, she think she's gone to hide away. Yeah, she's very calm. Yeah. She's in there. Right then. Let's move that. So we didn't need our sponge after all. So come on this way. We'll just mop up this little bit here. Now, hopefully, what you would have seen there, um, hopefully the camera would have been able to pick that up, and you would have seen them tiny, tiny little maggots. That were all around the base of her mouth parts. Now um, that's what we needed to remove and we've managed to actually clean all of them away and it looked like there was none left there. So as best that we can see at this moment in time and we give her a bit of a good wash, cleaned her mouth parts up and we've cleaned up that part around the thorax so she should be um, so much better and more comfortable now. So we've now got her in a dry environment and we're just going to leave her now to chill out. We're going to put her in a dark spot and that's where she will be left. We will not look at her again 
for maybe two or three days. And then she's got fresh water, so she'll be fine. And we'll give her two or three days, and then we'll get her out again, and we'll have another look, and we'll see what, you know, what has gone on, if anything. Um, now, when I say we're not going to look at her, we're not going to dig her out. We will be able to see through the enclosure, and if we see flies in there, then we will open up and have a look. But if there's no flies, we're just going to leave her be and hope for the best. Um, so hopefully, we've we've managed to do something. And as you can see there, we we are looking at an external parasite. This is not an internal one; it's an external parasite. The smell that we were getting, I'm pretty certain, is all the stuff around the mouth parts and where they actually are, where the maggots are. That is the bit that you can smell. Yes, it's, it's not a very nice smell. Um, and uh, we've managed to wash that up and clean it up, and hopefully things will be fine. If you have to do this yourselves at home for any of your spiders, you know, be extra, extra careful when you pinch what we call pinch grabbing you need to be able to push your spider down onto a solid substrate you know a solid surface and then that way you can actually pin it and then you can grab it so you're looking at as you would have seen with my fingers in the video if you're not sure watch it back and you can see we are holding around the carapace do not put your fingers past the carapace then fangs have got a long way to travel you know, so you literally just want to grip them up like that and you can do it that way. Another way is to fold the legs back and then you can hold the legs like that. But it's a little bit more technical. And you've got to be a little bit more adept at what you're doing. You so it it's, it's, a, it, it's a good way of doing things because it exposes everything. It's a very, very good way of doing things. But the way we've shown here, this is the easiest way to actually get a hold of them and do it. You will not be able to clean that spider up without pinch grabbing it you know there is no way of um, securing her in a way that's safe for her and for you you know this is a spider that has potentially a very strong venom so it's one of the ones that's classed as a medically significant venom um, we all act differently with venoms so we often get asked you know what is the most potent spider you have generally the answer is the one that bit you you know try not to get bitten that's the first point of contact really is just try not to get bitten and this is one of the reasons why we don't handle anything we do not handle it unless it is absolutely necessary if we had left her to her own devices she would most certainly die you know they would eventually just eat her away boom she would just die so we had to had to intervene and when you have to do it like that you need to do it in the safest way possible for both you and the spider so just be very very careful and um you know if you're not sure get some help get someone to help you you know but be very careful right well hopefully that's covered a few things it's it's very very strange how we've had this little case on facebook and now all of a sudden i've had one myself and uh and this wasn't a spider that's brought in this is a spider that we've had for a long long time you know, um, she's bred with us a few times. She's been a long-term inhabitant of the Beastie Room. This is down to the flies. They are the issue. And the issue with that, the reason she got that, part of that was down to the management of how she was in this box. And it was bad. So we've changed that. We've rectified that. And as we're working our way through, we found a couple of others that were a little bit too damp. So we swapped them out, dried them out a little bit, you know. This is one of the problems that we're going to find with these small containers and boxes. We need to be double, double careful of how much we are using in the way of humidity. We need a lot less in these than we do in our XOs with our mesh tops because the mesh tops allow for the escape. In here, it doesn't allow. If anything, it actually highlights what I've said in the past about um, people swap out ExoTerra mesh lids and they put perspex in with hundreds of holes drilled in it you will not get the evaporation through them holes like you do mesh so it's again it's another another thing you to get full ventilation you need mesh drilling holes in the top will not give you full ventilation 
they don't evaporate the same because there is still surface, plastic surface there that will hold droplets of water which just drip back down into your enclosure. So you need to be double on top of your water allowance for these types of enclosures. Right, well we will check back on her in a few days time and uh, yeah, we will keep you informed and uh, we'll see what what's happened and whether we've actually been successful or not. It might be a case that we need to do it all over again. Right then, well I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit of a sad sorry story, but it's one of the things we've got to deal with. And um, it does appear to be in the moment. Right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. We'll see you soon, guys.